Welcome back to another video from Keeling Geometry. Okay, tonight we need to start off again with a little review of vocabulary. So here we go. We're going to talk about an inscribed angle. And an inscribed angle is the angle formed when two unique chords of the same circle share an endpoint. So let's take a look at what that might look like. I have some circles drawn here and if you draw a chord and another chord and they share an endpoint, that is an inscribed angle. It can look, can be acute, it can be obtuse also, right? It could also, let's see if I can draw another one in here. I can make it really, really acute, like over here, like that. So those are all three inscribed angles. Well, great. Now how can we measure inscribed angles? Well, inscribed angles basically come in three cases. But we can break it down into three versions of what it is. Uh, inscribed angle could have one chord be a diameter. We could have inscribed angle where the center is in the interior of the angle, or we can have a inscribed angle where the center is on the exterior of the angle. That's it. There's no other possibilities. So let's look at case one, where the one of the chords is a diameter. If I have this, this is probably the easiest to understand because if I connect this, if I add that, one, then whatever this measurement is, this is a central angle, it's going to be the same, right? That's from last time. That is a central angle and it will have the same measurement. Now, this triangle formed, of course, these two are radii, right? And in an isosceles triangle, the base angles have to be congruent. Right now, we can subtract this from 180, but I also can remember a way of figuring out what those are compared to this. If you recall, this is an exterior angle, and the exterior angle of a triangle is the sum of the two remote interior angles. Right, so let's just put an A here this A, and this is A. Right, so A is equal to, well, let's see, 2a two, two is equal to x, right? Wait. So a must be equal to x over 2. Make sense? Oh, well, fantastic. x over 2. I know what x over 2 is. That is that angle, or that arc measure, divided by 2. So in case 1, that angle is going to be half of this intercepted arc. So if that's x, this would be one half of x. All right, and let's move on to the other cases. If I have case two and the center is in the interior, well, all I'm going to do here is break it into two sets of case one. So if this is x and this is y, this is half of x, right, by case one. This is half of y by case one, since we already proved because one side is a, one of the chords is a diameter. So this angle is one half of x plus one half of y. A little bit of algebra will help me that that's the same thing as one half of x plus y. Well, what's x plus y? Well, that's this arc. So yet again, this angle measurement is half of the intercepted arc. Wow. Now, if only it would work for case three. So case three. Okay. So we don't have a core a diameter, but that worked last time. So let's try it again make a diameter and I'll put we'll put new letters here that's a that's B 
Now, this one is case one, still again. So this is half of a, a divided by two, by case one. Now, I don't know what this measurement is. However, I do know what this is, because that's another big case one, right? So this one is going to be half of a plus b. So this one right here is one half, the big one, is a plus b divided by 2, right? And if I want to know just what the green arc is, all I have to do is take the big one, subtract the smaller one. So that's a plus b over 2 minus a over 2. Well, that, I can break that down. That's a over 2 plus b b over 2 minus a over 2, right? So eliminating those leaves me nothing but b over 2. So the angle, the green, this is the green arc, green inscribed angle, And yet again, it worked. It worked for all three cases. So now I'm ready to state my measurement. The inscribed angle measurement. The measure of an inscribed angle in a circle is one half the measure of the intercepted arc. Now, it gets a little bit easier. So I've got two inscribed angles. I've got a blue one and a green one. And they intercept the same arc. So the blue one is half of x, and the green one, well, oh, the green one is half of x. So what my con should my conjecture be, right? If they intercept the same arc, then their inscribed, their measurements must be the same, right? So we're going to state that as the inscribed angles of the same arc. The inscribed angles that intercept the same arc are congruent. Yes? Okay. What about this picture? In here, I have angles that intercept the same arc. So, yes, it is true that all three of these inscribed angles are the same. But there's more. They intercept what? They intercept a diameter. So, if they intercept a diameter, then that measurement must be 180, right? If it's half the circle, semicircle. Half of semicircle, oh, 90. 90 degrees here, 90 degrees here, 90 degrees any. As a matter of fact, 90 degrees all over the place, right? These are all right triangles. If they intercept a diameter, then they must be a uh, they must be a right angle. Uh, notice something. Look at that. What is that point really? Do you recognize that point? Yes, it's the center of the circle. Is it also what is it, its name when we're talking about these triangles? For each of these triangles, it's the center of the circle that intersects all of the vertices, right? It's the center of the circumscribed circle. Yes, it is the circumcenter, right? Fantastic. All right, so our conjecture should be Angles inscribed in a semicircle uh, are right angles. So the next word is a cyclic quadrilateral. A quadrilateral inscribed a circle is called a cyclic quadrilateral. Every side is a chord and each angle in, is inscribed in the circle. Okay, so let's take a look at some cyclic quadrilaterals. These two are both cyclic quadrilaterals. Notice there's nothing really special about them, about their shapes. But what is true about all cyclic quadrilaterals? And this time I want to look at the angles. So I know, let's say this arc from here to here is A. This arc from here to here is B. This one is C. And this one is D. Right? Right now, we know that the inscribed angle here is half of the intercepted arc, right? So this one is C plus B divided by 2. 
Make sense? This one is d plus a divided by 2. Now, likewise, I could write this one as a plus b divided by 2 and this one as d plus c divided by 2. But let's just look at these two. This is c plus b divided by 2 and this is d plus a. And if I put those two together, that would be c plus b over 2 plus d plus a over 2, uh, they have a common denominator. That's the same thing as saying, well, heck, I can put them in order, right? A plus B plus C plus D divided by 2. Oh, what do you think A plus B plus C plus D is? And yes, you'd be right. That would be 360 degrees. Divided by 2 is 180. What does that mean for my conjecture? The opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral are supplementary, right? Okay. Back to more vocabulary. A line that intersects the circumference of a circle at exactly two points is called a secant. All right. Now, I have drawn a secant here. And now L1 is a secant. Not too difficult to understand. What I'm interested in is drawing two secants. And this time I'm going to make it special. Let's make it a parallel secant. Here's L2, which is parallel this way, to L1. It looks as though the pieces left over are not the same. That's on purpose. But what about the pieces inside? The arcs inside. They look pretty close, right? Well, let's look at that. If I make a chord from this intersection to this intersection, I create two inscribed angles. You see them? I create an inscribed angle on this side and inscribed angle over this side. But wait, since L1 is parallel to L2, aren't these angles congruent by alternate interior angles? Yes, they are. If those angles are congruent, then this is half of this. So if this, let's just put a number, if that's 50 degrees, then this has to be 100. And since this is congruent to this, if this is 50, I'm just making that number up, then this would have to be 100, right? So no matter what, if we have two parallel secants, we, this will happen, right? And our conjecture would be if two secants of the same circle are parallel, then they intercept congruent arcs. Now that pretty much does it for today, right? Make sure you have all the conjectures, understand the vocabulary, and of course, bring your notes to class and be ready to start doing some problems. See you next class.